We have Oxford U, uh, Oxford Brooks again against uh, Queen's University. Belfast. <sighs> Ladies, well, it would be. It's a woman's regatta. Anyway, we won't state the obvious. Intermediate academic eights. Um, uh, good performance from Brooks there. They must have had a flying start. I missed it. I didn't catch it. And the these girls line. won't know that their club mates have won an exciting race. So can they do the double? Can they get a one-two? Oxford Brooks. That's a very strong eight there from Brooks. It is. Just uh, almost metronomic like blades going in, coming out, bang, job done. And that looks uh, well, That looks very, very, very impressive indeed, doesn't it? So Look we are that margin not already. That even 30% of the way down the course and they are Really, yeah, really going well there. That's cruising at 31. Some distance. And that is. They know they've done enough. They uh, do indeed. They're putting on yeah. a performance as they come through the grandstand. Yeah, they're they coming it through easy. the enclosed, uh, the um, the boating area now, okay. and they'll be passing us shortly, which is about the halfway mark. And I think you can say Here they. Go. they Bar and disaster, we've got this one in the bag. Well, they are just cruising as they go past, making it look good, making it look easy, and technically very, very tidy. That's lovely. Belfast just uh, trailing slightly. The Belfast ladies look just slightly smaller in stature, so maybe that was a bit of a disadvantage against them. But they are uh, neat and tidy. Just maybe slightly smaller per athlete. Well, Which they be could telling. be on their way to picking up the Sharp Cup, sponsored by Sharp. A uh, number of Sharp screens around the regatta enclosure in order to watch the racing live. It is the Intermediate Club 8. So you're watching Oxford Brooks now that have wound right down. They're saving their energy for the next round. Well, thank you for your patience, gentlemen. And I think Stan's ready to jump into my seat for the last lot of racing. I yeah, think I'm going to go and watch the quads from the bank. Lovely. We've got 10 more races and um, Carol Wallace, boys and girls, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lovely, lovely to see you, my lass. And, and um, indeed. I'll ca catch you very soon. Definitely. Okay. So, Stan's back in the hot seat. Stan, Stanley's back in the hot seat. Interesting stories, blistering commentary, and uh, I'm going to go and watch this racing from the bank. Cheerio the new. Right, she leaves as Glasgow University are about to uh, get under the way. Well, that's good. Um, that's, um, encouragement, then. that's race number 59. And that's against Dublin. D-U-L. Yes, I think we'll find Dublin University. Yeah, and the country's name on the bow of the boat, whose parents live in Henley. Little and known the name fact. is... Uh, I can't remember his first name. Coleman. Um, Tom Coleman, is it? Or is that the dad? I think the dad's... Anyway, yes, Coach Coleman. Well, at the moment, Dublin look to uh, have taken pretty much a length by the end of the island. Off Glasgow, yeah. I mean, that's an impressive eight as well. We've just seen one go down. I don't know whether you've caught sight of that, Stan. That, that Oxford Brooks, Brooks crew was looking so powerful. They were just paddling at yeah. 30, yeah. which is quite extraordinary, the, the power... Um, bearing in mind that we're talking women's academic eights here we're not talking about top class elite crews we're talking about women's academic eights and the sheer power of those two eights as they came down the course because the uh, it was a Dublin crew over against was it? it was Queen's yeah. Belfast I mean both those crews were looking really strong and powerful which is which is lovely to see the, the way the standard has improved here uh, at Henley Women's Regatta in the last 10 years and particularly in the last five is real testimony to the quality of coaching and training uh, and the facilities that are now available for these student rowers. I mean just to just to look at that crew uh, racing through that Dublin crew they have a, a rather shorter choppier style than some of the other crews we've seen here today but then if you row shorter in the water, then you can row the blade faster through the water. 
and the objective is to get the boat as quickly as possible from the start through to the finish and uh, actually as we'll see in the Olympics later on in the summer there is no right way of doing that there's very many different ways technically of moving a boat fast and uh, some suit some type of athletes and some suit others and here we have uh, a bit of a contrast there and uh, we can see now they're coming through just about reaching halfway and Dublin University in this academic eights first round heat they raced this morning only half the crews that were in the time trial this morning survived through to the 16 slots in the draw this afternoon and uh, we're just now working through the second four of the eight first round heats. The way they seed it was the fastest crew will go against the slowest crew in the time trials this morning. So there is possibly quite a distance in speed between some of these crews in these four heats because they don't disclose the times. They only announce alphabetically, but you can work it out by looking at the draw. And I think what we've discovered today in this race is that Dublin well, one of the faster crews and maybe Glasgow were one of the slower qualifiers because there is quite a difference between the pace of these two crews. I'll just pick up the rates if we've still got the camera with us. Well, we've got Bournemouth and Southampton next up and then after that it's uh, Oxford University Women um, Boat Club Lightweights uh, Reading Composite uh, up against Durham. Durham are the present holders of this, the intermediate eight and um, it looks like we're in for some very very good racing um, over the next couple of days gorgeous conditions now the sun is out there's plenty of people plenty of people down here on the bank racing stops at 5 30 there are then time trials this evening through until 7 p.m will we be streaming those time trials um, the images will be there right but yes i think uh that, that that will do that we tried to follow the images this morning but I think this evening we'll here we go evening. now this is the race I was just telling you about there this is uh, Bournemouth University against uh, Southampton University this uh, <laughs> intermediate academic eights uh, for the sharp cup sponsored by sharp and at the top of the island not a lot in that stand no um, Southampton at 42 and Bournemouth only at 38. Bournemouth there just have a bit of a wobble as their Cox corrected his course. Uh, and I think Southampton have got the better of those early exchanges. Well, I think, I think so. I think, unfortunately, when, it, when a Cox does that, he's either reacting to somebody missing a stroke of the boat slithering or possibly just hitting a gust of wind. But as soon as you put the rudder on, it's like putting a brake on. And the effect is that um, I think Southampton have probably got their noses in front now as they leave Temple Island, heading up through the car parking area. And uh, 1,500 metres of racing. They've covered about 250 so far. And yes. Southampton have got probably a length there. And they're still rating at 38, Southampton, which is a very high cruising rate they don't look very much like they're cruising but there are some crews these days in eights that seem to maintain a high rate over the whole course and that's i'm still taking it again now they're still rating at 38 which is a very high cruising speed indeed see where bournemouth are at rate wise they look a little bit lower yeah they're at 36s um and unsurprisingly the higher rate of stroke uh and both quite short strokes but uh, Southampton at 38 are leading by three quarters of a length I think as they uh, come away from the meadow uh, past the Cobus offices down towards the enclosures and they look a bit uh, they look they, they certainly look a bit tidier do Southampton very impressive um, and Bournemouth have been obliterated there by uh, a pole but you can just see their blades either side and you can see there that they're not as clean and tidy as Southampton, the crew facing the other way are about to go down to the start. They, they're just waiting for, these, for this race to go through. Then they'll cross at the crossing point there. Um, Southampton now, yeah, they've got over a length. And they've come down to 36, which is 
a much more reasonable cruising speed. Bit of noise, plenty of people here watching. Um, if you want to come down by the river, the racing here, side by side races tomorrow, tomorrow on Saturday starts at 10.30 with the final race at six o'clock. On Sunday, racing starts again, I believe, at 10.30 and will be all over by 4.30. 4 and then we'll have the prize give it at 5 o'clock. And there's now one length between these crews. Bournemouth settled now at 35, Southampton settled at 36s. And uh, just doing enough, I think, Southampton to keep their noses in front as we look at them. I can see them with the naked eye from where we are now. There is still an overlap between these crews, but uh, I get the impression that Southampton have got the measure of Bournemouth here. Um, at this point, of course, I should be proven wrong. Yep, yeah, as we're looking here at the two ace, Bournemouth um, are certainly still having a go. They're, they're looking a lot tidier now than they were further down. They, they, I think, yeah, I think... Uh, at 750 metres, they decided that they ought to really try and smarten things up. Maybe the impact of people watching from the bank. However, they're a length down. Are taking their rate up again now. So Southampton are now rating at 38 and a half, which is, they've been so high all the way over 38, 39s, all over the course. If anybody comes up and asks the questions, where can they go? They can't sprint. There's no more rate to go to. Well, they're up there and they're, they're well, they're not hanging on because they look, they actually look very comfortable with that. However, you know, you got Bournemouth at 39 as well now. 500 to metres to go. So it'll be interesting to see whether they've got enough in the tank just to hold off uh, a Bournemouth challenge. And Bournemouth look to me as if they could well be creeping up a bit here, Stan. Or is that wishful thinking? I think that's the effect of parallax. With it. It's quite difficult with the camera angles to see. Um, no, there's now, I think, clear water between the crews. I think that was the, the last challenge from Bournemouth. So we're now moving on, I think, to the next race, which has just got its way underway. It's uh, the senior... Uh, no, the senior quadruple skulls is next. This is the intermediate academic eights. Uh, another heat, which is Oxford University Women uh, Boat Club and Reading. And it looks like Oxford have taken a lead of about a length here. They're coming up to the enclosures shortly. Uh, I beg your pardon, it's Durham. Durham are the present holders of this. I do beg your pardon, it is Durham. It's the Oxford University Women Lightweights and Reading Composite ah. against Durham. And Durham, uh, well, it doesn't look like Durham are going to lift the trophy this year, does it? They are well and truly behind in this race, Stan. Yep, it, it, it outclassed, it's, one might actually say. It's a, a harsh phrase to use, but I mean, there's three legs between the boats. At least. So uh, uh, we're back down at the start now. This is a heat of the uh, senior quadruple skulls. Reading University D against Reading 